While the nation has lost its beloved premier and its great general Vladimir at the hands of the traitor Yuri, we all turn our eyes to the supreme commander who still fights the bloody battle against the Allied forces. General, I have accessed Yuri's files and he has provided us, shall we say, with a parting gift. The Allies think we do not know about this chronosphere in Alaska, from which they hope to launch a full-scale invasion. This is all they have left. It will be good to crush their hopes. And when it is done, you will be ready to become Premier of the world. Building. Incoming. Welcome back, Commander. Comrade General, I must warn you. The Allied Chronosphere could be our undoing. The first step is a swift naval assault. They will not be expecting us here, and that will be their undoing. I'm not entirely sure how the Allies are supposed to be able to take us out in a full-scale invasion, all things considered. I mean, this is the last refuge, and we seemingly control the rest of the world, so... Eh, whatever. This mission's actually rather tough on hard, especially at the start. And we're gonna see why in a couple uh, minutes at best. Um, but suffice to say that you kind of want to play this strictly in a defined sense. Uh, to begin with. Construction complete. Anything else never Can really felt here. like it worked for me. Building. First and foremost, it's always important to go Building. for gems rather than actual ore, just because of the immense gains you get from, well, that rarer substance. Construction complete. Building. You'll want to have defenses spread out across your base, and there's a few you shouldn't skimp out on, namely the anti-air stuff. As Zofia mentioned, we're going to have to invade the Allies once again, but we have to do so from the sea, as, well, the Soviets don't exactly have many other options. And if it's not been obvious enough during the entire campaign, well, the Allies typically control the skies. So having a couple of flak turrets around is a really good idea. As one might imagine, the fact that this is a chronosphere influenced troops into our base. We cannot stop this assault. Attack soon, Commander, or we will be overrun. Our base is under attack. Yeah, so because it's a Chronosphere influence mission, you're gonna have this happen every so often. Repairing. Training. Unfortunately for me, the IFV was able to ready. just be out of range of that uh, Gatling turret, Changing position. which is a little annoying. Our base is under attack. Structure sold. Repairing. Insufficient funds. Our base is under attack. On hold. And yeah, not having any air defenses means that you can kind of just lose to the first rush. Unit ready. I mean, if it's not the IFVs, it's the uh, Rocketeers, and if it's not either of those two, well, we'll see another attack. Our base. Rather shortly. Low power. It's kind of why I've gone for Rhino Tanks above anything else. It's just way more useful. Training. We also get Building. access to one of the more broken things in Red Alert 2. Unit ready. Namely, we have the cloning vats. The cloning vats is great because, well, when built, it allows you to immediately get a copy of whatever infantry you just produced. On hold. Yes, it Passing. also includes Yuri's, which I don't quite get why we have a Yuri and not a Psych War Trooper, but 
Uh, it's probably just something they didn't want to relabel in, in the uh, construction tab. I commander. I Construction complete. Cannot deploy here. Building. Allied ship reporting. So here it gets to be a little broken. We've seen it before with the Psychor Troopers, we've played against it quite a bit. Building. Yuri just has this ability to really turn the tides in a rather extreme way. There are limitations to his capabilities, of course, but still, it's uh, pretty important to take note of just how strong he can be. Our base is under attack. Ready for and unfortunately for me, the aircraft carrier is just a little too far. It's actually very annoying, considering it's like one tile away. As you might imagine, there's a lot of buildup that's going to go on in this mission. It's a pretty, um, it's a pretty tough task just to get off the initial island. You've got all the different attacks that will come at you. You've got rocketeers that show up, aircraft carriers, destroyers, and the like. And the allies don't shy away from having units either transported in via amphibious boats or flown across. The best defense I typically ever come up with is, well, just flood the area with Yuri's. After all, if Yuri manages to take over a allied unit, then they end up getting focused on destroying those rather than your own units. It might be a little broken. I won't deny that. Complete. Our base is under attack. Our base but is honestly, attack. if they're gonna give me Building. the ability to build Yuri's and clone them, you know what? It's probably for the best. Repairing. This mission also doesn't ever really pull any punches. It's probably the best example of you know, the AI just getting a ton of money to play with, and abuse its ability to just multitask all the time. Building. Yes, I believe this is also the first mission that we actually get to build the nuclear reactor. The nuclear reactor is, I mean, we've seen it before, always on the AI side, unfortunately, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It just pumps out a huge amount of energy. Uh, one or two is about all you'll ever really need, if I'm Cannot being honest. Building. That is, unless you have, you know, incredibly sprawling bases, or you have multiple right. ones. And then you just supplement with another nuclear reactor somewhere out of the way. But for all your conventional okay. needs, as long as you have a couple, you don't really need much more. Cannot deploy here. Now, after you've built enough air defenses so that you never really have to worry about rocketeers or any black eagles slash uh, harriers, that's when you shift production to your naval capacity, like I've done here. Squids is just a good way to safely remove any obstacles. Typically, the Allies don't ever rebuild their naval shipyards, Building. and they don't build them anywhere else on the map. So, after defeating those two and any boats that happen to still be afloat, you're kind of just set. Unit promoted. 
Also, I don't have any flak Unit scorpions, promoted. and I'm sure I'm going to realize that I sold my radar at some point. Complete. Also, we get another new building called the Psychic Sensor, and it basically just lets the player know when something is going to be in its area, whether it's movement or an attack move. The psychic sensor lets you know. It's actually a rather powerful building to ever build, just because you can more effectively know what is coming towards you and how best to defend against it. Uh, granted, it's easy for me to say that in this case because, well, the only things that will ever come after you are air units. But at the very least, in other ways, you can kind of at least get a heads up if you have anything coming your way. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of build-up to go through. We desperately, and I mean desperately, need to make our way across this little um, causeway, I guess we'll call it. Get to this other side, and well, take the fight to the Allies. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any sort of spy satellite, despite owning the majority of the world, which makes it uh, a little tough in order to get certain things going. Warning: Iron Curtain activated. Building. Our base is under attack. Repairing. Now, it would have probably been more efficient for me to have put down the Tesla coil first and then iron curtain that. Well, here we are, so there's not much I can really do otherwise. Construction complete. It's also not really a good idea to ever get your dreadnoughts to shoot so close to your own buildings. They tend to do friendly fire. Repairing. Building. On hold. Now, to prevent Insult. the cloning Building. vats from being completely broken, you're only allowed one. Yes, Commander. Construction Engine complete. Set. Ready, comrade. Moving. It's kind of the point in a match against a Soviet player where you have to get a move on. Building. Having nukes and iron curtains is dangerous enough, but even one cloning vat is kind of enough for a player to just swamp the map with, well, just about anything, really. Ship, report, ship, report, and fire! And yeah, as soon as you make a. you get a foothold on the primary island or whatever we want to call this position, uh, the allies are just going to start flooding you with units. Or miner under attack. Our base is under attack. Our missile ready. Training. How about some action? Ooh -ah. Ooh -ah. On my way. Your mind is clear, of course. Training. And if it's never been clear enough, well, my controlled units, they're great for ready. free no, and cheap scouting. Oh, we can build a they cost absolutely nothing. I don't ships. I feel like they impact Our your score. But, eh, doesn't really matter. Yuri's also don't have any sort of limit on how far away their unit, their controlled unit, can get away from them. Which is a thing in certain cases. So, something to keep in mind, at least, uh, in the future. But, for the moment, as soon as a unit becomes controlled, that's it. Unit lost. 
And if you're ever worried about too many uh, GIs or whatnot flooding a base, well, a nice Iron Curtain can take care of them rather than having to protect your own base if you need it. Now, despite having so many Yuris, which costs a lot, which is why you absolutely want some cloning vats if uh, you're going to be building any ever, there is at least one limitation on them. One, they suck against any sort of defensive structure, which there is a lot on the way to defeating the allies. Two, while they do have a... Um, a range that needs to be respected in terms of uh, them controlling stuff. If you fight anything that can f shoot outside of that range, well, you know, you're kind of asking for it. Notably, Mirage tanks are one of the better units to ever counter Yuri's with. They shoot just outside of their range. I have and, well, they kind of just immediately, like, murder stuff. Capture. Warning, Iron Curtain activated. Warning, nuclear missile launched. Now, I thought I was being cute here. Uh, protecting that and having a nuke drop. Yeah, maybe a nuke should take out a prison tower. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the case. Building. Repairing. Insufficient funds. Our base is under attack. And because I can't spot the Mirage tank because it's completely invisible, even a Yuri stands no chance against them. Structure sold. Repairing. And unfortunately for me, I'm in desperate need of money because, well. Not much really available on the initial island. Miner under attack. Building. Or miner under attack. Construction complete. Our base is under attack. Now I believe there's a special unit I might have been able to get, but unfortunately for me, uh, I wasn't really thinking about it. Not in the immediate sense anyways, because I was too busy worrying about my base. And then as soon as I went to go fix that problem, uh, well, one of my units got a little bit too overzealous, which is annoying. New construction options. All miner under attack. Unit promoted. Unit lost. Our base is under attack. Now, I didn't expect the IFE to automatically attack that polar bear, that's on me, but I was really hoping to be able to get, you know, that bear inside an IFE and then see what special party mode it might have had. It might have done nothing, but the fact that I couldn't test that out was annoying. So after GIs and after teleporting a bunch of IFVs over and over and over again, which we haven't seen the end of, the allies will absolutely start sending a uh, bunch of prison tanks at you. And they do that rather frequently. Now, thankfully for the player, the AI never really targets your units first. There's something about um, what the units are attempting to do that basically just makes it um, all the better for you, really. There's not much a other way to, to really say it. So the prison tanks and the, the IFVs will generally cause uh, any sort of damage because they're right in the area. The prison tanks will typically go for, say, your construction yard. 
And because your construction yard is after your Yuri's, they never really target them first. Target. Warning, nuclear missile launched. Unit. Oh yeah, and there's also Kirovs over here. I'm not really sure why, but hey, I'll take some. Yes, Commander. Navigating. It becomes rather annoying, actually, to try and move up on this map, because... Our base is under attack. Well, in my case, I spent a lot of money on Yuri's, which I still feel is the way to go. But if you go on a... If you go with Yuri's, you end up not really having money for base defenses, and if you don't have base defenses, you kind of just lose a lot to Prism Tanks. It just feels to me like the Prism Tanks are, or Yuri's is the better way to go, just because they'll last longer. And at worst, once you've got your Yuri's, then you can worry about getting base defenses. In any case, as soon as that's all done, you've just got a bunch of defenses, uh, a bunch of attacks to constantly hold off and then push your way through, which isn't exactly all that great. Because there's no real way to easily damage the allied base, you're always in a slog trying to push forward. And anytime you're ever finding yourself saying, well, I'll just capture a building, if you don't immediately reinforce that with a couple of Tesla coils or some Yuri's or anything really, it, again, just becomes all of them a more tougher. And any buildings that you capture and are subsequently destroyed can't really be replaced because, well, again, you're just limited on what you can do. There's only so much you can defend at the same time without having some money issues somewhere. Now, I say that with $14,000 in the bank, but that's because it's you know, 40 minutes into this mission, and I've been banking it at some point. Also, for the longest time, I thought that Dreadnoughts would not be able to reach those, so I was going to build some Kirovs, and then it turns out if you attack the ground, even with two or three Dreadnoughts, eh, the Allies just don't have enough to be able to um, repair. And, well, by this time you've got upgraded Dreadnoughts that are max rank, do more damage. It just, you know, it's self-explanatory, really. Accomplished. Yeah, dreadnoughts are a lot stronger than I remember. Everywhere, citizens are honoring the new Soviet premier. We will now go to London. People in the streets, truly the finest hour is premiere. It has been decades since we've seen anything quite like this. Uh, wait, uh, here comes a new premier himself. It would have been good to see inside your mind, General. I still may get that chance. And so the Soviet campaign closes out with Yuri apparently still having a brain in a jar somewhere, being cognitive of his surroundings, and wishing doom upon all of us. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough of Red Alert 2. Obviously, next up is going to be the expansion, Yuri's Revenge, and there will be uh, quite a lot to talk about once that shows up. In the meantime, though, I leave you with the credits. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.